Здравствуйте! Hello and welcome to Russian language class. So let us have a quick recap of the topics that we have learnt in the previous lesson and then we will move on to the lesson, the topics that we are going to learn today. If you remember in the last lesson we have discussed about the declension of nouns, possessive pronouns and personal pronouns in the dative case. Kamu vi pishiche pismo. So, if the question is kamu vi pishiche pismo and I have already told you that if the question is kamu that means we are supposed to use nouns or pronouns in the dative case. So, I have written an answer here. Ya pishu pismo tvaimu drugu. Ya pishu pismo tvaimu drugu. So, I am writing a letter to your friend. So, here Tvoi has become tvoimu, which is a possessive pronoun and what question does it answer? It answers chimu. So, if the question would have been chimu drugu vi pishiche pismo, the answer would have been ya pishu pismo tvoimu drugu and druk is a masculine noun becomes drugu in the dative case. Ya pishu pismo tvoimu drugu. So, I am writing a letter to your friend. So, here pismo is the direct object and tvoimu drugu is the indirect object. What if we have to use a personal pronoun in place of the nouns? So, what we do is we use a personal pronoun here. Ya pishu pismo yimu. Yimu denotes the personal pronoun own. So, own in the dative case becomes yimu. So, I am writing a letter to him. Yimu and tvoimu drugu. So, if the question is kamu, we can answer either with the noun plus possessive pronoun or with the pronoun. So, this is how the nouns, possessive pronouns and personal pronouns decline in the dative case. So, now in this lesson, we will discuss some more topics related to the dative case. While discussing the uses of the dative case, we have discussed that there are certain prepositions which require the dative case of nouns pronouns to be used after them. And I had al also told you that some of the prepositions are like such as pa, ka, blaga darya and saglasna. So, these are the four prepositions we are going to discuss in this lesson. So, all these prepositions they require nouns and pronouns to be in the dative case. So, let us first we dwell on the first preposition which is per. This is a very interesting preposition because in English we do not have any corresponding or equivalent preposition in English. In Russian this preposition conveys several meanings. So, in this lesson we will discuss about some of them. The first meaning it conveys that movement along the surface. So, if you are if the subject is moving along the surface or on the surface this meaning is conveyed by this preposition per and again I have already told you in the beginning that per takes noun in the dative case. For example, nashi ribyata shlipa birigu Riki. Nashi ribyata. Ribyata is boys or guys. So, our boys went along the bank of the river. So, berik is bank. So, berik after per has become in the dative case form and the dative case form of berik is berigu. Per berigu riki along the bank of the river. So, here as you can see the movement that is described in the sentences along the surface. The next meaning it conveys is movement in various directions. So, if the direction is not fixed you are going here, there and from there to there. In that case we use the preposition per and after per noun in the dative case. For example, on liubit yezic per miru. Mir is world, yezic is 
to travel. Lubitz is to love. So, he loves to travel around the world. So, here he loves to travel around the world or across the world, across the globe. So, that is how you can translate this sentence into English. So, here as you can see the movement is in the various directions. So, there is no fixed direction where his, he is heading to. So, in this circumstances or situation we are supposed to use the preposition per along with the noun in the dative case. So, we will now look at other meanings of the preposition per. As I have already told you that the preposition per conveys several meanings. Some of them we have already discussed. We will look at some other meanings of the preposition per. Preposition per denotes the routine repetitive action which takes place at the regular intervals. So, if an action is taking place regular at regular intervals and it is a routine action, in that case also we will use the preposition per with the noun in the dative case in plural. For example, mi sabiraimsya pasridam. So, here srida is the name of a weekday which is Wednesday. Mi sabiraimsya, we meet on Wednesdays. So, here we are using the preposition per along with the noun in the plural in the accusative case. So, if we are denoting a repetitive action, a routine repetitive action which is taking place at a regular interval, then we use the preposition per along with the noun in plural in the dative case. We meet on Wednesdays. The next meaning the preposition per conveys is the distributing action. So, for example, if there is a situation where something is being distributed a piece, one piece each, in that case also we use the preposition per along with the noun in the singular dative case. For example, mi dali druziyam pa yablaku, mi dali druziyam pa yablaku. So, here as you can see after per we have used singular noun in the dative case. So, what does it this sentence mean? Mui dali, we gave friends one apple a piece. So, one apple to each one of them. So, here this is the distributive action. We gave friends one apple a piece or one apple each one of them. The next Example for the same meaning we have is Ribyatav Ziali Pabilietu Fkase. Ribyatav Ziali Pabilietu Fkase. Kasa is counter, cash counter. Biliet, biliet is ticket. Vziat, you know this verb. This is the perfective aspect of the verb brat, which is to take. Ribyata, we have just now discussed, is the boys or guys. The boys took one ticket a piece at the ticket counter or at the counter. So, here also there is a distributive action that is why the noun has been used in the dative case in singular. So, this is two of the few meanings that the preposition per conveys. There are other meanings as well, we will look at some of them. We are discussing the various meanings of the preposition per when used with the noun in the dative case. So, we have already discussed some of the meanings and the next meaning that the preposition per conveys is special, specialization. So, preposition per also indicates the specializations of a person or a thing. For example, it also conveys the meaning of a subject. When you want to denote a subject, then we also use the preposition per. For example, on specialist per physique, on specialist per physique, he is an expert 
of physics per physique physica becomes physique in the dative case because it is used after the preposition per on specialist per physique omnia examen per chemi omnia examen per chemi i have an examination on chemistry i have an examination on chemistry or i have a chemistry examination so that is that is how the subjects or specializations or expertise is denoted in the dative case with the use of the preposition per so these are some of the meanings that the preposition per conveys we have also left some of the meanings which will be discussed later on in the later lessons now the second preposition we are going to discuss is the preposition ka ka denotes the movement towards something or someone so basically it can denote the movement towards an inanimate being or as well as animate being and it takes kuchimu ka kamu so if you are using an animate noun it will take ka kamu if you are using an inanimate noun the question will take kchimu for example mi padashli k magazinu mi padashli k magazinu see the verb padaichi is a verb of motion so this verb itself denotes the motion or a movement towards something mi padashli k magazinu kuchimu vi padashli so if the question would be kuchimu vi padashli we will use an inanimate noun with the preposition ka to denote the movement towards something so we approached to the shop or we went to the shop so this is how we translate the sentence into english mi padashli k magazinu the next example we have is ya idu kbratu ya idu kbratu k kamu vi idioche so if the question is k kamu vi idioche k kamu is to which place or to whose place are you going or where are you going so how will you answer this question because since the question has an interrogative word kamu we will use an animate noun in the answer in the dative case ya idu kbratu so i am going to my brother's place or i am going to my brother's that is how we say in english so here kbratu doesn't mean that you are going to brother it always means or conveys the meaning that you are going to your brother's place if we use kasistre kpadruge kdrugu they will also mean the same thing so you are going to either your friend's place or your friend's house or your sister's house and so on so this is how we use the preposition ka which means the movement towards something or someone so let's move on to the next preposition that take the dative case of nouns which is blagadarya the next preposition which is used in the dative case is the preposition blagadarya blagadarya denotes an action owing to somebody or something which means due to something or someone so when an action happens owing to someone or somebody we use this preposition blagadarya for example blagadarya anne yas dal examini blagadarya anne yas dal examini sdat is the perfective aspect of sdavat which means to pass the exam sdat is to pass the exams blagadarya anne so thanks to anna or because of anna i passed the examinations so here blagadarya could mean either thanks to or owing to or because of or due to so because of anna i passed the examinations 
The next example we have is Blagadarya Sirgeyu Miss Magli Paluchich Bilieti Damoi. Blagadarya Sirgeyu Miss Magli Paluchich Bilieti Damoi. Smugly is from the verb smooch. Mooch, smooch. Smooch is the perfective aspect of the verb mooch. Can. Paluchich is the perfective aspect of the verb paluchach, which is to get or to receive. Bilieti, you know, tickets. Damoi, home. So, Blagadarya Sirgeyu. So, because of Sirgei, we could get or we could receive the tickets home. Because of Sirgei, we could get the tickets home. So, here as you can see, Blagadarya Anne, Blagadarya Sirgeyu, they denote an action which has happened or which has been made possible because of Anna in the first sentence and because of Sirgei in the second sentence. So, this is the use of Blagadarya, of the preposition Blagadarya and Blagadarya takes the noun in the dative case. So, now we will learn the other preposition which is Saglasna. Saglasna also takes the nouns in the dative case. The next preposition which takes nouns in the dative case is the preposition Saglasna. Saglasna denotes an action which is in accordance with something or somebody. The preposition Saglasna means according to or in accordance with something. For example, Saglasna Zakonu Nilze Kurich Na Ulitse. Saglasna Zakonu Nilze Kurich Na Ulitse. Saglasna, as I have already told you, that it means according to or in accordance with. So, according to the law, Zakon is law, Nilzia kurit na ulitse. You already know this word Nilzia, which means one is not allowed or it is not allowed to smoke on the street. So, as per the law, it is not allowed to smoke on the street. So, here as you can see, Zakon, which is the masculine noun, has been used in the dative case. Saglasna Zakonu. The next sentence we have is Saglasna Planu Mi Budim Itchi Fkina Theater Jevichesov. Saglasna Planu Mi Budim Itchi Fkina Theater Jevichesov. Saglasna Planu, as per the plan or in accordance with the plan, we will go to the movie theater at 9 o'clock. So, here again. Plan, which is a masculine noun, has been used in the dative case. And Chisov, Chisov, if you remember, we have discussed that how do we express time in Russian, and I have told you that Chas has three forms, and with five onwards up to twenty, we use Chisov. That is why we have used here Jevit Chisov. Saglasna planu mi buji mechiv kina chiatrav Jevit Chisov. So, this is how we use the preposition saglasna and it takes the dative case of nouns either in singular or in plural. We have already discussed about the declension of nouns and pronouns in the dative case. Let us now discuss about the adjectives in singular in the dative case. So, how do adjectives, singular adjectives, they decline in the dative case? We already know the nominative case forms of the adjectives, singular adjectives. And they answer to the questions kakoi, kakaya and kakoe. So, kakoi is the masculine form, kakaya is the feminine form and kakoe is the neuter form. So, now let us take the first adjective which is krasivi. Krasivi is Beautiful. Krasivi is masculine form and it answers to the question kakoi. Krasivaya is the feminine form which answers to the question kakaya and krasivaya answers the interrogative word kakoi. So, what happens when these forms 
are used in the dative case and what questions do they answer. The masculine adjective answers the question kakomu, the feminine adjectives answers the question kakoi and the neuter adjectives answers the question kakomu. So, again the masculine and neuter forms are the same. So, what happens when we use krasivi in the dative case? It becomes krasivamu. So, what we are doing is we are dropping this ending of the adjective and adding omu at the end to get its masculine form. So, krasivi, krasivamu, krasivaya, again we will drop this aya which is the ending and add oi. So, what do we get? We get krasi vai, krasi vai and what about krasi vai which is the neuter form? Krasi vamu as we have already seen that the masculine and neuter forms are the same. So, krasi vamu will represent the masculine as well as the neuter forms. Krasi vamu, krasi vai and krasi vamu. The next is balshoi, balshoi is big, balshoi Balshaya and Balshoi, Balshoi masculine, Balshaya feminine and Balshoi neuter. So, Balshoi turns into Balshomu in the dative case which is masculine and Balshoi when it answers the question Kakoi. So, this is the feminine form Balshomu, Balshoi and Balshomu. So, these are the three forms of Balshoi in the dative case. The next is Kharoshi, Kharoshi is good, Kharoshi, Kharoshaya feminine and Kharoshe neuter. So, what happens when Kharoshi is used in the dative case? Kharoshi becomes Kharoshemu, so we are dropping the ending and adding Yemu, so we are not using Omu, but Yemu here with Kharoshi, Kharoshemu and here we are not using o e kratke, we are using ye and e kratke. Kharoshemu, kharoshyei feminine and kharoshemu neuter. So, there are two endings omu and yemu. So, with kharoshi we are using yemu, not omu. And the last adjective I have taken is sini, which has a soft ending na, e and e kratke. So, sini, sinia and sinie this double ya with feminine and double ya with neuter. Sini becomes sinemu, changes to sinemu. So, what we do is we drop the ending e and e kratke and add ye, ma and u. Sinemu, sinyei and here ye and sinemu. So, sini becomes sinemu with masculine nouns, sinyei with feminine nouns and sinemu with neuter gender nouns. So, this is how we decline the adjectives in the dative case in singular. So, now let us look at some of the examples. Ya pishu pismo staramu drugu. Ya pishu pismo staramu drugu. So, I am writing a letter to an old friend. Stare is old and drug you already know friend. So, I am writing a letter to an old friend. So, here as you can see, the question is kakomu drugu. So, if I have to ask a question for the adjective, the question would be kakomu drugu vi pishiche pismo. So, to which friend are you writing a letter? So, I am writing a letter to an old friend. So, starmu will be the answer to kakomu. Kakomu drugu vi pishiche pismo ya pishu pismo staramu drugu. The next sentence that I have written here is ani pakaze vayut photography rus ke student ke ani pakaze vayut photography rus ke student ke pakaze vach is to show photography you know photographia is photograph or picture rus ke student ke so they are showing the pictures to russian student so here Stujantka is the feminine gender noun. That is why we are using Ruskai, which is the feminine counterpart of 
ruski so what question does this form answer ka koi student ke ani pakazi vayut photography ka koi student ke to which student they are showing pictures so here the questions question would be ka koi and here ka komu why because the noun is masculine and here the noun is feminine so for feminine nouns be ask the question ka koi and for masculine we ask the question ka komu so this is about the declension of adjectives in the dative case now we will discuss the declension of the demonstrative pronouns atat and tot and the determinative pronoun ves in the dative case so how do these pronouns decline in the dative case when used with a noun you already know the nominative case forms of these pronouns atat tot and ves so this is the masculine form of these pronouns atat tot and ves atat is this tot is that and ves is all so what happens when we use the masculine forms of these pronouns in the dative case atat changes to atamu tot tamu and ves simu atamu tamu and simu the feminine forms ata ta and sya changes to atai toi if sia and sia atai toi and sia the neuter gender forms ata to and sio changes to atamu tamu and simu atamu tamu and simu so these are the forms that are used in the dative case so now let us look at some of the examples ani puchi shestva wali puff sei inji ani puchi shestva wali puff sei inji puchi shestva vach is a verb which means to travel ani puchi shestva wali they traveled all around india or across india ani puchi shestva wali puff sei inji so here after per we have used the determinative pronoun ves and india as a feminine gender noun that is why it has become sei ani puchi shestva wali puff sei inji atamu studentu 15 vilas apshi jiti atamu studentu 15 vilas apshi jiti apshi jiti is hostel 15 vilas we have done this word this means to like and atamu studentu atamu studentu here represents the logical subject of the verb panravitsa so this student liked the hostel so here again as you can see this atat has been used in the dative case that is why its form has changed to atamu atamu studentu 15 vilas apshi jiti and the last sentence idite ktamu stolu idite ktamu stalu matlab go to that table so here idite is the imperative form and we are using the preposition ka which means the movement towards something or someone and tamu has been used in the dative case and tamu as you can see is the masculine form of the pronoun tot so tamu stalu go to that table so this is how we use the demonstrative pronouns atat and tot and the determinative pronoun ves in the dative case so this is all we have for today's lesson so what all we have learnt we have learnt the prepositions that are used in the dative case we have also learnt the adjectives in singular in the dative case and apart from that towards the end we discussed the pronouns atat tot and ves in the dative case so this is all for today 
we will meet in the next class till then spasiba dasvidanya